Hi everyone, it's Mr. J here, and we're going to give you a quick tutorial on how to use Smart Music on your iPad. Now this is geared towards grade fives, but of course anyone watching can um, use this to really get them started as well. So the first thing that's really important is to make sure that when you download the Smart Music app, you are getting the one that has an icon that looks like this. Um, if you search new Smart Music, um, that's the one you are looking for. If it has a different icon, it's the older version of Smart Music and it will not work. So we're going to open up the app. And hopefully you already have had a chance to log in. So if you have not created your username or password yet, that's a different video to go watch. Um, I'll post a link to that as well. But you need to make sure you've got your account set up first. So I've already got mine ready to go. So I'm going to hit log in. Now, when you log in, you are going to see, it's actually probably going to show you not on that page. I'm a little bit ahead here. Let's go back to our home. It'll look something like this. Now, when you're in grade five, up to this point, we've only been working out of our method book. So we want to find that book. Some of these other things you see here, you will not see this because I'm logged in as a teacher. You're seeing things like other people's assignments um, and, of course, things I need to grade. You will not see this. So if you want to go searching up here, we're going to search for sound innovations. And I'm going to search for this up right now. And it's probably going to be the top one that says free. If you click on this, you'll be able to hit open. Um, you're going to filter by instrument first. So I'm going to be playing the trumpet right there. And when it says movement, this actually just is another way of saying song. So in this example, I am going to play hot cross buns. And I'm going to hit open. So what this is going to do then is it's going to download the files for the song. It's going to download some backing tracks. And then you are ready to play. Um, obviously you need to make sure that it can use the microphone to hear what you are doing. So, um, most basic thing you can do is hit play and it's going to play. So let's see if it works here. So you can hear it has a nice backing track and students are able to play along with this. A little bit more entertaining than just sort of playing by yourself. Um, up at the top, you can see you've got accompaniment. So what this does right here is it controls the volume of that backing track. If you click beside it, that'll turn off the accompaniment. So you will not hear it. Um, beside it, you've got my part. So this is where it'll actually play your part. So you can see if I turn off the accompaniment part and just turn on my part, you will hear... Oh, let's stop here. I'm going to click back at the beginning here. So now you're just going to hear the instrument part. And since I select the trumpet, it is sounding like a trumpet. Pause that. Uh, the metronome is that clicking noise you might be able to hear. It's sort of the key help keep a steady beat. So normally when you're practicing, um, depending on how you want to do it, you can do it just with the accompaniment. You can do it just your part. Um, and you can turn off the metronome if you don't need it. So um, you can start at any measure. You can see by clicking on that measure. So say I just want to practice starting from right here. I can select there, hit play. It's going to count me off. It's going to give me four beats, and I can start playing. And yet again, I can adjust the volume of the accompaniment here. Now let's say I don't know a note. I'm not quite sure what this note right here is. If you click it, you'll see two little icons come up beside it. If I click the one on the left, it is going to bring up a fingering chart for me. So it'll say, okay, in order to play my C note, I need no fingers down. On the other side of it, I can click it and actually play the sound for me. So if I want to hear what that note sounds like. Up here in the, as you can see, I'm changing the numbers in the upper left there. This is called our tempo, which is our speed of the piece. So let's say the section is just a little too fast for me right now. I can slow it down. So this one is normally at 90, but I want to do a little slower. I'm going to hit play. So now it's going to be a slower beat to this piece. And you can hear that it's slowed down. You'll notice that the backing track gets a little bit warbly because it's trying to stretch the, the backing recording. Uh, that's nothing you can do about that. That's normal. Um, it's just sort of a way so you can still do the backing track but do it a little slower. So as you get faster and faster, you can bring it back up to speed, or you can hit the reset button, and that's going to bring you right back up to the full speed of 90. Um, other cool things you can do. Let's record before we get into that. 
Um, one of the great things about this is it's going to tell you whether you're playing the notes right or wrong. And in order to do that, you need to hit the record button. So I'm going to hit the record button, and I'm going to play through Hot Cross Buns and hopefully uh, not make too many mistakes. So I'm going to hit record. I'll get my trumpet ready here and see how we do. Here we go. There we go, I replayed Hot Cross Fun. So a couple things you'll notice. Um, anytime there's a yellow note, that means I'm a little bit late playing it. And because I was playing um, against a, uh, since it's setting its screen to my computer, I was a little bit behind on these notes right here. If they're green, that means they were played perfect. And if there's a red note, that means that the wrong note was played. Um, if you want to go back and listen to it, you can go here and listen back to it. Oh, we've got to click it here, sorry. <laughs> Beautiful playing. Now, a couple of the things you can do if you, uh, it'll show you up here on the take. Sorry, I keep trying to click on my computer, which is not where I want to click. I need to click on my iPad. Um, up here on the top, you can see it'll show your takes and it also gives you a score. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. It's not always going to mark it accurately. And especially since grade fives don't need to submit their things through smart music, it's not it's not really critical. It just kind of gives you an idea of where you sit. Uh, if you go over to uh, tracks, that's kind of what we've already talked about. Uh, display is how it will highlight measures, whether you want it to actually show the measure or not that they're on. Um, they can play with how they want the cursor to look. Yet again, not super important. What is a cool thing to do, however, is looking at the loop function. So if there's a part that they're finding a little bit tricky, um, it's a good thing to practice. So let's actually switch songs here. Let's go back and we're going to do Jingle Bells because there's always a spot in Jingle Bells that some people find tricky. So we're going to cancel this. We're going to open up to, let's go back to Trumpet. And this time we want Jingle Bells, which is song number 25. Open this up. And we're going to make a loop. So a loop is a section where they can practice over and over again until they get it right. So. Um, the trickiest section that most students often have is in the third and fourth measure here. So I'm going to go up the top here. I've gone to loop, and I'm going to hit set. And now I can drag these little um, bars, I guess you can call them, and I can set which section I want to practice, create a loop. So I've selected these two bars, and I've said that I want to count off in between loops. And now I can hit play, and what's going to happen is it's going to keep looping during that section. So let's hit play. It'll stop and then I can begin. Now you'll notice when you do that, it does assess you, um, but it does give you a chance practice it over and over again and it's a good thing obviously to slow down the speed if you're having a hard time with it okay or yet again if you're not quite sure of a note you can click on that note check the finger for that note okay and it'll give you a couple different options usually the first option is always the best option so for example this one here you would almost never play a g note with one and three uh, but it does still work okay if you want, you can then uh, save your tracks. So let's go back. Actually, let's go to my takes. Okay. And we're going to do a take of this one. Actually, we're going to go back to our loop here first. Let's delete that loop so it doesn't do that. We're going to do a take of Jingle Bells all the way through, and we're going to record it. So let's go. We set our tempo here to regular. Let's try Jingle Bells. I'm going to make some note mistakes, too, so you can see the red. So as you can see, I made some 
in that one. But he tried to joke as well, so it's not seen as red. Now, what you can do is you've got this lovely paint on your head, and I'm just going to kind of spray that on my head again. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, on the iPad version, looking at it here, it is not possible to actually export that take. As far as I can tell, I do not see a way to do that. If you're doing it on a computer, it will actually let you save the uh, recording and then send it. So unfortunately, on this one, there's not. So it's just sort of a good way to practice and get an idea of how you're doing. So that is a overview of smart music and some of the things it can do. Um, the biggest thing that students can be using it for is to practice their songs, do it slowly, and it'll give them feedback in terms of what they're doing correctly and maybe some notes or some sections that they need to practice because they're not doing it perfectly. If you got any more questions, be sure to uh, send me an email or give me a call and I'll be happy to help out. Have fun. Talk.